Hello, everybody. Hola. Hola. <laughs> Konnichiwa. And, uh, What's that mean? That means uh, good day in Japan. Oh, all right. Very good. And uh, feliz cumpleaños. And uh, for the Italian speaking audience, hey! <laughs> <laughs> Ciao. That, that's Ciao. Fonz talk for hey, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, Let's see here, Rico. I'm going to get right. this. Let me get this. Uh, set. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. There we go. You got a bigger screen there. Cool. Ooh, but it's cut off there. Is that okay, dude? If, if, what's cut off? See over here? That's us live right there. Um, as long as I can see this, this is there fine. You go. Hello, Chadwick. Alexa. Leonardo. Howdy. Oh, there's Tethic. Hello, buddy. <laughs> can everybody hear? Can someone say they can hear us? Hello, Mike and Wayne. Hello. Could you guys change background gray? It's a bit bright. Oh, uh, it's too harsh. Oh, but we, it is gray. Maybe on their monitor it's... Really oh, it bright. could be on your monitor. Yeah. Because... Judy, are they... they they're they looking at... Uh, ooh. I think I see what... Wait, is the canvas. The canvas is, is too wide. My ca... Oh. Oh, you mean the canvas of what yeah. we're drawing on? Just too stark of a white color. Yeah. Oh, just a light gray would probably be good. Yeah, you know? That'll be fun. Yeah. Well, uh, hold on, you guys. Let me get it set up. The technical wizard shall adjust. Background there. D -D -D. Come over there. You need to come over here now. Mm, I think I'm all right. Okay. Hey, if you want to make it uh, really hold dark up. gray, I can draw in white on like a chalkboard. That would look cool. Let's do that. It'll be really easy on their eyes. Just to be different. Do something different. That's a little too different. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Busting my back over here. <laughs> All right. You know, You're gonna, shooting, look, shooting. Mike's going to be doing it. What do you want it? You want it to be like, like, like a really dark gray, if almost black. And then I'm going to... Like gonna, that? You see that? Yeah, yeah. And then I'm going to draw in white. Like a chalkboard. You know, like the old pencil test they did in the 40s and uh, 30s. And uh, stuff. Okay. Let me... Uh, Way back in the day, they used to do negative. They would uh, develop the film, and it would be a negative of the pencil test, and it would be white on a black background. Like and, that? Yeah, and it looked cool. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to set up your pencil. <laughs> All right. Stark white. Today, we are going to cover Straight Ahead and Amazing versus Porsche to Porsche. How's that? Perfect. Yeah, I like it. How's that look, everybody? That's the... This is Rico's. Uh, this will be way easier on your eyes, yeah. Because with a black background, your eye, your iris, is, your uh, pupils. Ken Lesh, up. just subscribe. <laughs> Thank you, Ken Lesh. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Okay. So on the proper layer. Uh. Good point. Oh. oh. Okay. Oh. Excuse me, you guys. I got allergies. Bless. Um. Okay, you're going to start off with this one, mm -hmm. and remember you come over here, Rico, yep. hit on that blue Blank frame, and then I go, to, then I flip here. And you flip there. Got it. Right. So, there you go. All right. Everything's set up. You know, this is kind of like a free commercial for TV paint, because if I can learn how to do it in two seconds, you should buy it too. <laughs> Nave. Is that how you... Thank you, Nave. We just got a new subscription. Thank you. Awesome. Nave Ghost. Okay, so I am going to animate something simplified, and I'm going to go straight ahead, literally straight ahead. I'm going to go frame to frame. I'm not going to do any posing ahead of time or anything. I'm just going to start with a pose here of this. That's weird. That's weird. I got no... Uh... Why did it go red? That's weird. Cool. How'd you get rid of all that? Uh, just that's redo. Oh, like in okay. Rough Rough Animator. Mm -hmm. Cool. Another good program, okay. by the way. Put down a line. Okay. Test. There you go. Cool. 
Okay, so is it possible to make it a little thicker of a line? Yeah. Uh, it's just really right super fine. There you can go. Oh, sweet. Up and down, Got up it. and down. It's just a drag, click and drag. Yeah. I love that. Ah, that's nice. Freaking good. Nice. Okay, now we're ready to go. Okay. So, start off with the... Uh, is that good? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I got my little thumbnails here. I'm just referencing real quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, animate straight ahead. This uh, it's a rabbit character, and he is going to uh, take a step or two, and then he's going to uh, something's going to happen to him that I've thumbnailed out here, and you'll see it unfold as we go. Let's see here. Next frame. Don't want to crowd you, Rico. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, those. Oh, okay. You see it? Yeah, I see it. There we go. Just getting my flipping controls down. Thank here. you. Got another subscriber. You Thank you. Before and after. I will put on the onion skin real quick here. Exactly. Leave it down. down. No. Nope. Watch this. So you go there. Wait, Click can you take care of the equation because other people ask the equation? Uh, let's see. You look like the voice Ludwig von Dirk. Yeah, the voice <laughs> I was doing was like Ludwig von Dirk. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever used your finger to animate? Uh, no, I never have. Have you ever used your fingers instead um, of the pen? No, I never have. I might have tried it at one point, but I don't recall. Uh, no, I never have. It's possible. Uh, oh, you know I'm, what? I'm I, think I, I think I might have one time on uh, my iPhone. <laughs> I think I tried it, but I had no control. Going the wrong direction on this. I'm not used to it. You do it. It's gonna be a while to get used to that. This is left. And Death right. thick. Left and my right. young lad. Okay. Oh, see, I already blew it because I'm doing poses. I should be doing straight ahead here. Let's see. We've got to get this flipping, man. This is like. What's the matter? I, I'm not used to going up and down. I'm used to going left and right with flipping, and when I go this way, I'm, I keep going forward. It's left, right. It's going to take me a while to get used to that. Left, right, left, right. Um, let's see. And the eraser is... Look, I'll, I'll show you. Hold on one sec, you guys are going to answer some questions here. Uh, you, you can do this. If I come over there and you want to make it a keyframe, you come up to that plus sign. And then I'll go to the next one. And I hit that plus sign, you can use the left, right. Oh, okay, like that. Cool. But you need to always highlight it in red on that plus sign up there where it says okay. one red plus. Got it. Okay. And so that makes it easier. Uh, let's see. How to, how to animate background and camera moves. Uh, Judy, this is more of a question for you, <laughs> especially moving the perspective <laughs> grid line. <laughs> <laughs> I animate on paper and it's hard to understand. Yes, it, it is hard to understand. Um, it's going to be when I animate background, in, I mean, when I, I animate camera, I usually, um, well, depending on the scene, because sometimes I use a lot of perspective to, to be sure that they um, you know, to be sure that the character maintain the same, the same um, proportion, you know? Oh, the volume? It's a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit, it's a little bit tricky, you know? It's, it's the, the thing that I like the most, that I like to do the most, but people hate, I don't know why, but I love it. Who? <laughs> yes. I really love, because it's a lot of, you know, you incorporate, incorporate a lot of, like, um, 
Action movie. You know, people don't get bored when they see Carmen movie. Well, Judy, really cool. well, Judy, Judy, you like that technical, the that difficult <laughs> stuff. I don't understand why. <laughs> I don't know why either. Most animators, when they get a scene like that, they they like, oh, what's the matter? Well, Something got shifted somehow. How do you? Never mind. What? I'll just adapt. Uh, come on. <laughs> I'm trying. Um, but I will tell you, if you do it on paper, uh, when I get scenes like that, or anybody gets scenes like that, what you want to do is you want to go uh, from your X sheet and you want to go, I would say, every foot of, every 16 frames, you could do it, whatever is comfortable for you, and put in the key poses of the placement of where the character will be as the character is moving with that background. I hope that makes sense. It's just like if uh, you're working on Roger Rabbit and you have live action, you gotta make sure that the character matches with the live action. So when I've had scenes like that, I go about every foot of film, which is 16 frames, and then I, I know where I'm going as I animate after I put down those, those key frames. Thank you, Sketch One Up. We just got a new subscriber. Thank you. Awesome. Um, Awesome. And then after that, after you put have your character in there, does not mean that you are going to be stuck, you know, with that drawing that you put in there. You just roughly put it in there and you animate around it. And I think that's the best way I know how to do it. Hope that answers it. Let's see what else. Damn. Crowley Joe, that's it. Crowley Joe, I hope that helps. Uh, draw Mickey Mouse mashup as Superman. Alexa wants to draw. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll do that later, Alexa. Uh, how's it? No, don't go up there. Oh, here it is. This is like shifting the. What am I doing here? Oh, I see. I got it. Yeah, if you put it right. There, as long as you don't touch that, maybe you're accidentally. I think my hand is hitting it oh, or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, got it. There you go. So you're animating straight ahead right Completely now. Completely straight right? ahead, just like a flip book. Okay. And if you need the light box, you. Yeah, I know okay. how to do that. Okay, let's see what else we got here. I think. Alexa asked me before, sorry Alexa, I do rem I think I remember that where you asked me to draw a mashup of Superman and Mickey. Uh, thank you for subscribing. So Mike's animating straight ahead right now, and he's just going to show you what the advantage of going straight ahead is, because you can feel it frame by frame, and also the disadvantages. Yeah, there's some big disadvantages in this instance, <laughs> as you can see already. Why do you use onion skin? Um, you know, Mike doesn't use it that much. I use it, it's just over the years. Uh, I use it because it's easier for me to track the shapes and forms as a man of me, especially if I'm going pose to pose. When I go to put in the breakdowns, it just, for me, it's easier. Now, some animators, uh, they don't use it. And I, I sometimes don't use it. Uh, it's just, you know, I saw my mentor, Del Bear, he, he always had it on. And I was like, well, if it's good enough for him, I'll use it. It doesn't matter, really. If it works for you, it does. If it doesn't work for you, don't use it, you know, as long as your animation is working. 
How do you find animators if you want to start your own animation studio or just animation project for YouTube? How much do animations typically need to get paid? Uh, it is pay per hour or pay per project? It is uh, on the norm, it is paid per foot, which means 16 frames uh, per foot. That's what it, it comes out to in, in film terminology. It's 16 frames per foot. And how much, what, what would you say is the average per foot? Ooh, that depends on who, what the budget yeah, is. Yeah, but, but you know, on the average, budget. would you say? Oh, I don't know, maybe uh, kind of like guitar lesson, 50 bucks an hour maybe? Yeah, it, it, it could go from 50 to 100 bucks a foot. It matters, let's say if you have uh, a scene with just one character, you know, and you've been in the industry for a while, you can get up to $70 a foot. If you got a three foot scene, but it's got 10 characters in it, obviously that's gonna be a lot more pencil miles and you're gonna have to pay more for that. Uh, animation isn't cheap. So I hope that answered. And how do you find people, uh, especially with this internet, I'll tell you, um, you just go on there and uh, if you find people who are animating out there, you know, just contact them and ask them if they'd be interested in working on your project. And, you know, you pay them. You know, everything's, it's always different. You know, if you got someone who's just starting out, you know, you can work out a deal with them. It could be cheaper. So, oops. That's, well, uh, I, I got to undo. I think I undo this up here. I think I deleted the frame. Yeah, I think. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. I hope that answers it. How do you find animators? Uh, Alexa. So. Oh, Alexa, I didn't know that. Very good. Animation on the cam is really smooth, must admit. There you go, Rico. <laughs> Mike, can you explain, please? Uh, can Can you kind of talk as you're... That, yeah, it's kind of hard. But. I'm just going, uh, you know, I'm letting I'm letting the animation kind of animate itself. I'm not really paying attention to anything except trying to make a drawing that feels like it's the next one in sequence with what the movement is. So he's taking a step here, this this rabbit, and what he's going to do is he's right about here where he steps down on this last part. <clears throat> you can see already from doing straight ahead that the volumes and the proportions are all over the place. It's a real mess. He's not even registered to the ground. He's moving around. It's just a, a real wreck, you know. But it has a fluid movement to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're sacrificing all these other things for uh, just the sake of fluid <laughs> movement. Plus, oh, which, is, which is not, you know, that's a very small part of it in this is the fluid movement rather than what's going on. So it's really out of control. It's a real mess. But I just wanted to do this demo because I wanted to show you what literally happens when you go straight ahead. You know, when you're doing this stuff. What, what, uh, ooh, that's an extra frame there. How do I get rid of that frame? Oh. Uh, so, yeah, the whole idea of this there. demo is to show you what, uh, what kind of a corner you can paint yourself into with straight ahead animation. Red one. Okay. Cool. So he takes a step here, right there, goes down, brings his other leg up, steps down, and as he steps down this time, this is where he's going to step on either a thorn or a tack or something like that, or a nail. So the next frame, he's going to actually start to react to that, right here. So he puts his full weight down on this sharp object, whatever it may be, a tack or something. And again, I'm just trying to keep it loose. Uh, 
And you'll notice sometimes that when I'm animating this, I don't start with uh, drawing the, the body you know, first and then drawing the legs down here. What I do is uh, I'm doing something kind of what Walt Stanchfield taught us, which was whatever's going on in the scene at this time is the most, whatever the most important thing were, that's going on, that's the part you want to animate first. So I always start with the legs on this you know, the feet and the legs, because they're the ones that are contacting the ground. And that dictates what the body's going to do, how the body's going to react to this movement down here. That's why I'm starting with the legs. It may seem a little unorthodox, but, you know, that uh, that's really where all this stuff, everything else stems from that step. So here he's putting his full weight on this tack, and now he's got to react to this. Sketch one up asks, how long should it take for someone to animate a foot? Oh, you know, uh, that that really comes down to how how much drawing you've done and how many years experience. It it should take about I would say what Mike is demonstrating here. You know, not very long. You can see he's staying real loose here, so you don't want to in, in the very beginning. Wait. Hey, honey. Can you answer? What? what? I did? What? What'd you say, Judy? Uh, full animal episodes has 150 ones. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, What's the question? Crowny Joe, do you have a way to keep the 12 principles in your mind as you animate? You know, I think that's sort of like if you play guitar and you're playing the different chords and then you break into lead. Um, it's where you do it so much that it's just intuitively they're there. Now, I, with that in mind, I will say that there are still times when, if I'm animating, I'll sit there and animate, do everything, and I'll look at it at speed. Thank you. We just got a new subscriber, Enrique. Is Don that is that right, Judy? Thank you, Shane. Um. And there will be times that it's like, oh, I can't believe I forgot that basic principle. But it really is just a matter of, of putting the time in and looking at your tests and then realizing you should have put in the overlap here. And you'll, you'll see it. And as time goes on, you just start naturally, intuitively putting them in there. I hope that answers that question. Very good. That was a good question, Crowdy Joe. So here he's uh, like to take a step, takes another step, puts his full weight down on this tack or this thorn, goes whoa and reacts. He's starting to jump up because he's feeling that pain as that thing penetrates his uh, poor little tender foot down there. Little happy tree in the background. <laughs> <laughs> It's a happy tree. Let's see. How do you exaggerate a funny walk? Push everything further than you think it would be, and that will make it funny. Yes. <laughs> Push everything. Like Mike just said, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to say it again. Do thumbnails. Little thumbnails. And that way, before you sit there and start drawing 
large, like Mike is here, you'll you'll know how uh, <laughs> you know where you're going with it, and which poses are going to express the funny attitude within the walk. And that way, when you when you go to exaggerate it onto your actual animation, you can even push it further than your thumbnails. But at least you know where you're going. Hope that answers it. Sounds like it should. Thanks, Rico. <laughs> so now here's an interesting part of this uh, action that's going on here. He's reacting. Whoa, how did that frame get there? I got one backwards. This one has to go here, and this one has to go here. Oh. So I got to switch those frames somehow. So here's the, an interesting part of this action where uh, the character is um, reacting to this and he's going up in the air, he's jumping, and what I'm going to have to do is I'm thinking ahead that he has to switch the weight from his foot that he stepped on the tack to the other foot that's okay to get that weight off of that tack because that's the painful part. So he's trying to shift his weight over to the other foot. And that's why he's jumping over. And that's why his other okay foot that's not injured is, is starting to transition over to the right. Because he's going he's gonna to have to land on that foot. So he goes up. As you can see already that, that foot that's in the back swings around. Coils and anticipates up. And is going to go over. And it's already starting to travel over to start to land on the other side here. So that's what I'm trying to get and you'll notice that I'm not even doing the ears of the rabbit or the arms of the rabbit yet because that's all gonna be uh, like a secondary action that's not the primary action of what's going on here this is I'm trying to get all the primary stuff done right first. And you're mainly trying to show them the difference between straight ahead one what I mean yeah yeah I'm showing you I'm post just post. doing a, a straight ahead demo here so that you can see what the pitfalls are and what how it can get out of control and stuff It becomes really obvious. I'm trying to this skin here because the space, even the spacing is getting out of control at this point. You know, that's what happens with the straight ahead stuff. It gets pretty whacked out when you're flowing along. Any other questions about this stuff? Or? Uh, no, nothing yet. Okay. Yeah, if you see something going on here and you have a question about it, yeah, feel free to. Uh, ask I'm seeing things that are not working already so I, I'm trying to adjust it so it just basically starts to work there we go and there was a good example what Mike was just doing there the when we talk about finessing your scene it was just, he, had, he slowed down right in that area, and he just positioned all the shapes in their correct area, and that's just, that's what they mean by finessing. Do you ever use guidelines like arcs? Uh, I do. <laughs> yeah. I, I draw them in all the time when I'm animating, because it uh, doesn't bother me at all if I put my arc lines in there. Yeah, nobody sees it anyway in the final product. It's just a, a working, a workhorse type drawing for yourself, you know. Uh, can you do a demo on cleanup? Uh, we have a video out there that's about cleanup. We can't do that today, but um, there's a video with Rascal on one on one animation how to clean up. Uh, I would just check that one out. You have 107 videos now, or more? Uh, no, it keeps growing as you keep going with these. <laughs> <laughs> it's glowing. Trying to get a flow going here. Let's check it out. Let 
like I said, now I'm visualizing in my mind what the arms are, are going to do, but I'm not animating it yet. It's just because it's not going to, uh, if I try to put down, like I said, this is straight ahead. I'm not going to try to predetermine where those arms are going to be. I'm going to go back into this and add the arms later and let them just kind of flow the way this stuff is flowing. And you'll see it's very fluid, but it, it's all out of control. And that's, well, that's the whole point of this demo is to show you what not to do. Because I don't think anybody really covers that very much, which I think is unique that uh, you should see. You should be uh, aware of how things can go wrong and see it actually unfold before your eyes. So that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm really going to put a stretch on this foot here because it's a cartoon. I was so happy to oh, see... Oh, go ahead. I was so happy to see in Ratatouille when they got that real good squash and stretch stuff going on in CG. That was really cool. Really Here's a question for you, dude. Yeah. Uh, when you animate frame, uh, frame to frame, like straight ahead, yep. don't you still have to refer to the first drawing so you can maintain the volume? Yeah, that was going to be part of the, the demos I was going to show, you know, how to do this with, uh, you keep a drawing either the first drawing or a model sheet drawing underneath all these layers and you can just keep referring to it yeah that's one way to do it. but I'm trying to do it without that right now because I wanted to just show you know how things can go awry <laughs> animating straight ahead like I said because nobody really shows that you know and I think it's important to show there we go uh, there's a question this may not be relative but do you know which computers perform best with programs like TV Paint? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, That's a good question. I, I think all of them perform well. Yeah, I would imagine. Because it's, uh, it can be Mac or PC. It's the same program yeah. either way. Uh-oh. If that comes up again, it's saved. Oh, sorry. It's our no. It will come up here. What is it? Uh, it's TV Paint is saving the your. Oh, gotcha. Like an auto save. Your test here, yeah. Okay. Who drew your caricatures in your thumbnails? It's excellent. That's you. Oh, does that mean the one? The caricatures that come up on the show. Of you and I? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that was me. Thank you. Yeah, you're getting pretty good on that TV paint there, Rico. I'm getting pretty slick. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be doing a feature in no time. <laughs> okay, now I'm at the point where he's really got to be grabbing this foot in pain. So now I'm actually going to start to draw the arms in here because it's an important part of what's uh, unfolding within the scene. So I'm going to, uh, let's see here, try to make this read a little bit. recommend use use the arm arm or the wrist in animation oh I see what you're saying um, I recommend trying to draw with your arm from your shoulder trying to but look if you if you let me see where where am I 
want to make sure I'm in camera. If you got just a little tiny little area and you're just drawing in the eyes, eyebrow, no, it, it's, it's done from the wrist at that point. But when you're first putting in the big shapes, uh, I, I do recommend you try to draw from the shoulder the, the entire arm. That way you're going to get the big shape. It's going to keep you looser and it just freer. So if you go to figure drawing class, you know, usually we're drawing on... Oh, let me get in there. Anyway, we're drawing on big pieces of newsprint whatever and they they have you hold the pencil the side of the pencil and you're holding it like like this sorry dude I don't want to, I'm gonna have drawn Rico's head draw my head <laughs> you hold it like that and the reason they uh, force you to hold it like that is because it forces you to use your whole arm and then when you go back, now when you go back to drawing on the animation disc or computer, uh, you are going to hold it the normal way, but you'll be used to using your entire arm. So I recommend you do try to draw with your whole arm. Hope that answers it. Uh, uh, Crowley Joe, uh, do we teach online? Uh, I used to. I, I don't anymore. I think Jim Vanderkyle is teaching online. Yeah, he just started, I think. Oh, you can look up Jim Vanderkyle. He's he's teaching online. I think he just started. Excellent animator. Great draftsman. Woo. Yeah, man, he's good. Slick. Love and, his work. Do you know how to spell Vanderka? Yeah, V A N is the first part, then D E R is the second part, and then K E Y L is the third part. So it's Vanderkyle. It's three parts. Okay. Yeah. And and he's on Instagram. And is he on YouTube? I don't know. He, I think he is. But okay. I definitely on Instagram. Yeah, you look him up on Instagram, and you can like do a direct message to him, ask him if he's got a YouTube channel or whatever. Right. And get something going there. So you can see now what I'm doing is I'm adding the other parts, the arms, the, the snout, or the muzzle, and the ears. And also, again, straight ahead, I'm starting with the first drawing, and I'm watching, I'm letting the parts that are there dictate what these parts are, how they're going to flow, and how, where they're going to advance. So I've got the arms coming down, doing the transition. And man, am I keeping it loose. Same way you kind of put breaking in the joints of the arms. I'm putting a break in the ears here as they kind of come down. You'll see that there's a curve like that going on. This kind of thing. Instead of just a, a regular arc, it's getting a little bit of an S curve in there. Whoops. I'm just trying to keep this a little. There we go. So it reads a little bit. in there. Let those ears start to... You can see the back of the head is moving over to the right so that's kind of pulling on the ears and the ears are kind of catching up so they're kind of collapsing down a little bit here. See how they're kind of breaking into themselves. Here's a question. Has either of you animated over live action like Roger Rabbit? Yes. Uh, yes. Me very little. I think you did more of that. We did a lot of that in, uh, in the 90s in television commercials. There was live action plates, they call them. And then we'd animate the characters over the top of that. Yeah, we did that quite a bit, actually. It was really good training. Really good training. Uh, yeah, I remember when I first did it. Uh -huh. Oh, I was so confused. <laughs> and again, what I did was, what I finally figured out was uh, to put it down like every 16 frames, I put down some K 
key poses. Not even poses, almost just big shapes to know where the character is going to be within that that scene. Let's see. How do you paint backgrounds? Backgrounds are my weakness. Uh, <laughs> That's a question for you. <laughs> I don't do backgrounds. <laughs> I don't do many backgrounds either. Um, you know, with backgrounds, you just got to uh, understand perspective. You do, you do a linear drawing of it, and then you go in, and then you uh, put in your, your key colors on the background, then put in secondary colors. I don't really, I wouldn't call myself an expert in painting backgrounds. So uh, I, would, I would study just painting and color theory and I'm trying to think what else and study uh, the background artists of all the films and the thing you do want to do now this is for sure with backgrounds in animation you want to make which we got a video on it's called staging for animation what you want to do is make sure where the character is going to be in the scene you want to make it clear meaning that you don't want a bunch of things in the background that are interrupting the the clarity of the staging of the character so uh we have one where rascal comes running down a hall slides uh, at a doorway then jumps under the bed and i explain it all in there as far as staging goes now, if I went in to go do the, uh, to paint it, I would just put a, a wash down in, in the background, and then I would put in primary, or my basic colors, and it matters what kind of mood you want. If you want it to be happy, you're going to go with the warmer colors. Uh, cooler colors, it just matters what you want. I hope that explains it. That's more than I know about it. Yeah, I mean, we we really were linear art, artists that. Uh, yeah, we're not renderers. Yeah. yeah. Looking fluid, dude. Yeah, it's getting there. Just as a side note, you know, a lot of. Uh, instructors I've seen and I'm not putting them down or anything I'm just making an observation a lot of animation instructors I've seen they they start out with the first lesson is the walk cycle and uh, I think that's a bit too overwhelming for most people because it uh, it's a lot of stuff to think about I mean you can see even here I'm, I'm breaking it down and making it uh, in separate p passes you know I'm doing the, like I said the primary movement and I'm um, working on this more of the secondary stuff. So it's a, it's a lot to uh, keep track of. I would definitely uh, save that for more of an intermediate or advanced type of a lesson. As far as focusing on just that, just the walk cycle itself, or the, any walk, whether it's a cycle or not. I mean, wouldn't you say that's kind of a tough one, Rico, is the uh, walk cycle or the walk? Uh, it's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, it is. Walk cycles, uh, they're one of the more complicated movements, especially if you're trying to get the walk cycle to illustrate the personality of, of the character, you know? So you got to... You, when you create, I mean, Mike right now is animating straight ahead, so that even makes it a little harder, don't you think? Yeah, it's pretty or tough. A lot harder, I would say. If you do it pose to pose, it's a little simpler. But once again, like the question before about how do you exaggerate, uh, you know, a, a walk cycle? Well, that's personality. If you have a character that, let me see if I'm in frame. Mm. 
Sorry, guys. I have to look over here. Yeah, the characters. <laughs> Walking like that. Those are going to be the key poses. And, you know, it's a big guy walking like this. Those are going to be the key poses. And you got to make sure that what gets confusing is all the different elements, uh, meaning the arms and legs, which is hard enough right there. And then if they got ears, clothing for overlap and drag and follow through. Oh yeah, clothing. <laughs> but what's really important, like uh, Mike's doing here, you can see where he's filling in the far limbs, the far arm, the far leg. And definitely we both recommend that because that's how you're able to keep track of those elements, of those legs and arms and anything else that will help you do it. Uh, I bought my Tracy paper. What is the best? What is the best animation you have ever made? <laughs> uh. Wow, that's that's <laughs> subjective. I mean, that's a, a matter of opinion. With yeah, yeah. I mean, it's everybody has a different opinion. Mm -hmm. Like there's stuff. I don't know. I can't pick that one up. Like I show, I'll show Rico something that I'll be proud of, and he'll. <laughs> I can tell he'll just like, oh, that's nice, that's good. <laughs> and then I'll do something. I really, I'm not that proud of. And he goes, oh, nice. So it really is yeah, subjective. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like the, you know, a perfect example of that is that character you did. I think it was a walk of a circle for the head and a square for the body or a rectangle exactly and that thing is just i love that thing and you know you think that's kind of a throwaway thing i would it, think but it was a throwaway a lot i of love it like man. that we just got a new subscriber i the name went away uh oh. lewis i think the name was thank you we always like subscribers so i'm adding the tail too on this i just realized i'll put a little tail on him as well so very fluid, you know, lots of little, all these different things are going on. Different timings on different elements. So what's the best animation you ever made, this? Yeah, this is it. It's always the most current. It's safe. Okay. <laughs> oh, man, that's a tough question. What's the best animation? Well, I don't know, man. I, I don't know either. That's a toughie. It's yeah. really hard to answer that one. Yeah. Like I said, it's all subjective. The best. I'll tell you one thing, uh, it may not have been the best animation I ever did, but I'll tell you it was one of the most fun things I've ever animated, which probably helps to make it best, which was the coyote in a Roadrunner cartoon with Chuck Jones. That oh, was that, fun. That was beautiful work, yeah. That was so much fun that it was the only time in my life when I animated something and I laughed out loud when I was drawing it because it was cracking me up as it was unfolding. It was just fun, pure fun. Oh, I love this Yeah, so you much. got those online, don't you? Yeah, it's in a demo reel on uh, Vimeo, I believe. Yeah, you were working with Chuck Jones on that, right? Yeah. With the man himself. The man himself, man. Talk about a trip. It was... Uh, it was bizarre. It was surreal is the perfect word for it. It was surreal working with Chuck Jones. Because he's such a legend and he's done so much in his life, you know. It's like how do you how do you even comprehend that he's standing right there in front of you, you know? And being a, a an admirer of his, his work and all his crew's work. All the people that worked with him on his team, you know, they were just so good. All those Warner Brother people were great. Let's see how this is flowing here. There we go. And by no stretch of the of the imagination would this be perfect because straight ahead is straight ahead has its uh, challenges. Let's say. But I'm really not um, I'm not really pre-planning anything at all when I'm animating. I'm just kind of going. You know, I established the thumbnail idea, and now I'm going ahead and. Uh, trying to make it feel like what it, I'm trying to make it feel and do what it's supposed to do you know as far as uh, but you are thinking more spun 
spontaneous right now. Sorry, guys. Spontaneously, yeah. Spontaneously, right. You are doing that right now. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm just like kind of figuring it out. As I draw, like the second I look at this next drawing, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to try this with the arm. Right, which will... Look, you guys, there's also, there are times when uh, I'll have a happy accident, I call it. Oh, yeah. Where I'll be animating, I'll put down a shape or a line, and it wasn't really where I'd planned on putting it, but it, I put it down there and say, oh, that, that works a little bit better, and I'll just go with it. Yeah, exactly. So, that's why it's good to just throw something down. Just throw it down and go. Uh, when is your next live? Uh, not, not sure. Hopefully next Saturday. Why do we call each other Rico? (laughs) I'll let you take that one. Uh, (laughs) just years ago we saw, uh, Edward G. Robinson movie. Uh, what's it called? It's called, uh... Little Caesar. Little Caesar, yeah. <laughs> and for some reason, we both got a real kick out of it. And Little Caesar, Edward G. Robinson got, would go, uh, ah, is this the end of Rico? He always, in the movie, always talked about himself as in the third person. And so years and years ago, I can't even, 20 25 years ago, oh, yeah. we would uh, just play around, and I'd call him Rico, go, Rico, Rico. And we'd just play around, and then we ended up calling each other Rico. <laughs> That's the history. We were going to use the op- or the ending scene from Little Caesar for our opening uh, credits, but couldn't do it because of copyright issues. <laughs> Is this the end of Rico? So see, he's grabbed his foot here because he's, ouch, he stepped on this tack. But he's going along, flowing along, and then all of a sudden he's, whoa, jumps up and then lands up. So I'm going to have to figure out, straight ahead wise, how to get these arms over there. But I'm envisioning them going, you know, breaking the the pattern of of swinging here. They're breaking out of it here, and then they're going to come up, and then he's going to reach out probably somewhere out to here like this. I'm just throwing this in here because I want to have somewhere to go with this. So, I, you know, this is what I'm envisioning in my mind. So I'm just throwing it down for now. And I'll work into this now that I've got something. I'm still going to go straight ahead working into this, but I just want to jump ahead and kind of give myself a little parameter or something, a mm-hmm. goal, goal post to work into so I'm not flying too blind, you know. Similar. So it's kind of a mixture a little bit here, huh? Of post to post. It is. Yeah. Only when only when it's convenient and when you need it. So I've got this is another thing. I've got one, two, three, boom, drawings to get up to there. So I've got to think about that in my mind, where that arm's gonna be. So it's gonna go from here. I've got three three I call it three moves instead of three drawings to get that thing. It's like I think chess, you know, three moves. <laughs> to get it where it's gotta go. Always using uh other things to uh, use as an example, like chess or music or whatever. And you know what's really cool about this demo, you guys, is Mike is uh, going through this. And a lot of people will write to me and they want to understand this one particular way of animating, like a formula. Well, you can see here, Mike's breaking it up. He's kind of now going he's doing it straight ahead but then he put in those drawings that one drawing to show where uh you know it's the main pose right there where he's going to and that's that's the thing I, i want everyone to understand it's not like it's this formula that you've got to go by whatever works for you is the way you should go but the thing is, you got to put it down there. You got to try these different ways and see what works for you. I believe that everybody will, you know, they'll do the if you work pose to pose in the beginning or straight ahead. 
you still mix it up in certain sections, just like Mike is doing here. And here's another thing that, uh, so I've been animating straight ahead going, you know, from left to right here on the timeline, and I'm going, you know, from the beginning towards the end. But here I'm, I'm backing it up. I'm going from here, I'm backing up and animating in reverse now. I'm trying to come and meet in both, from both ends into the middle right. to make it flow. Because I, I can easily, more easily visualize where that arm's going to be from here to there than I can if I try to figure it out from here at this point. Because it's already here. Why not think about, oh, it gets right up in there and then comes down a little bit. So I might have it uh, kind of just transition from here to here. Yeah, and there, like there he is. He's making that. And I'm going to connect him right here. And if it doesn't work, I just change it. Big deal. If it doesn't flow and breaks everything up and ruins the whole scene or whatever, I'm just going to redo it. And that's why I keep it so scribbly and loose like this and simplified so that I can easily change this stuff. Without spending hours and hours trying to do all the details on the character. See, those are popping there, so I'm just going to reanimate this. I'll take these away and I'll just redraw those and make them flow into that new ear position that I came up with. If you want, Rico, you can use the back of the pen. Oh, That's okay. the eraser that makes it easier for you. Okay, thanks. Breaking my floor again, eh, Rico? I'm trying to help you out. <laughs> you ain't great. <laughs> now go get your pencil box. <laughs> yeah, see there. Even that drawing doesn't look like it's going to work. I'm going to redraw that a little oh, bit. Oh, man, he's still using the eraser, man. Oh, uh, I, like, I like clicking on the program. <laughs> All right, let's see. I have a feeling that these ears would look better if they were kind of like this. Like that. That's part of the process, you guys. That feels better. So Let's I'm gonna work into that. See. One, two, three. Four. Uh, straight ahead makes me think about Cuphead. Oh, I love Cuphead. Cuphead. Uh, it's like 1930s style game. Yeah, that's one where James Baxter was. Did he? Oh yeah, he did a little demo on it. Yeah, that, with uh, him and. Uh, yeah, I remember watching the demo um, of that, and I couldn't I couldn't really tell if uh, I think James Baxter was working pose to pose with breakdowns, but I really can't remember it. Um, could you next do a double bounce walk? Oh, oh. Sure, sure. Wanted to, we want to do hit on some of the, the main principles, but I'll write that down. Let me see. So we'll talk more about storyboard animation. Uh, storyboard animation? I'm not sure what that, that yeah, is. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, storyboarding? Explain what that is. A Maybe. Bit you're asking about uh, storyboarding I've never been a storyboard artist I've done revisions but uh, you know storyboarding is I've always thought of it is you got to understand film language really well and uh, cuts going from one shot to the other and the style of the film you're working on. I one time worked on a film, it was for little kids, really little kids, it was more of a learning uh, TV show. It was very simple staging. Everything was really in profile or straight on, nothing really complicated. And then when I worked on, uh, oh, I worked on Cat Scratch at um, Nickelodeon and they had a couple of storyboard artists uh, Lane and Luther they were just incredible and they would push everything because their uh, our director Mike Gerard 
loved upshots and but they just understood the dynamics of film language so it just really matters what you're trying to convey within your uh you know if you're making a series uh you know you're going to use stronger angles stronger downshot upshots perspective and if you notice in let's say the Warner Brothers shorts they they kept everything for the most part pretty simple except for uh what was that called opera doc what's opera doc what's opera doc yeah that one had a beautiful i mean beautiful designs but you would see a lot of times things were in just profile what do you think yeah i mean they tried to be more dynamic and spend more time on that one for for some reason they wanted that to be a showcase and then, well that was sort of their spoof on fantasia yeah yeah it yeah. was yeah. <laughs> there we go that arm seems to be flowing better there so now I can make those arms swing out and around and then grab his... I'm getting them way out way out like that so that they can anticipate the grab. They're, they're like doing a huge anticipation. Talk they to come that in. camera. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're doing. Buy this <laughs> wonderful stylus. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but he's making sense, you guys. It's Everything is very clear. That's what he's doing. The staging, very clear. You want to... Uh, Remember, when you go into your animation drawings, you want to push it further than you think it would be, especially when you're first learning. Push those poses out. Because if he animated where the arms were just tucked in, uh, it wouldn't be as strong when he goes to grab his foot. So what I mean by that, if you could see me, if he comes like this, he goes to grab, you don't see it as well. My arms are here, gets confused with my, my body and everything, but if my arms are out here, it's going to be seen clearly by the audience. I'm also doing my lame attempt at effects. He's, yeah, he's doing effects, Bucky. <laughs> so let's see how I want to <laughs> convey that pain. Ouch! <laughs> he boom, hits that tack. Ow! Wham. Oh, yeah, cartoonists make noise when they animate, too. Wow! <laughs> oh, absolutely. Whenever I get into it. When I'm drawing, I always got, if I'm looking for an expression, uh, it's on my face. I'll sit there, it's like a, you know, <laughs> if someone's going, oh, I'll actually have that physically on my face. Yeah, that's why you see in those books, you see the guy looking in the mirror, the animator, and he's, Making all expressions and stuff. Yeah. Let's see, check out these ears. Alright. Now they're going to start gaining a little momentum more here and start flaring out. Like this. That tail's going to start coming up. Make this read a little more clearly. I have to say, straight ahead is so much fun. It's just pure movement. Any other questions coming through? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's quiet on the front right now, Rico. Oh, quiet on the any questions, you guys? Yeah, if you guys have any questions about like uh, the thought process of what's going through my mind when I'm doing this or anything, you know, just uh, <laughs> feel free to uh, inquire. Very good. When I animate, I use a mirror to get every anatomy right. Yeah, that's good. Good reference right there in yes, front of you. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. 
suffering succotash, Rico. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I think a mirror is a really good uh, thing to use. I always had a mirror. Well, I actually, you, I still got one, but it's more of to make sure my, my hair is straight for the live streams. <laughs> <laughs> you had a very interesting way of using a mirror back in the 80s, I remember, in your room, at your place you were living in. You would, he'd have a full-length mirror on his door, and when he finished a scene or, you know, roughing out the scene of this big stick, stack of flip, He'd take the flip and he would go over to the mirror and flip it in the mirror and see it reversed in the mirror and, and, and showed you all the imperfections or whatever. What were you thinking? Like, I, you know, how would that help you? It would help me because when uh, I read The Illusion of Life and they would talk about doing, and this is really true, I would, uh, you do a drawing and do it as good as you can and then flip it over and you'll see all the imperfections that you need to correct and then you do a draw over on that one and then you flip it back and you have it it will be correct for your scene well i just took that idea and used it with a stack of drawings to flip it into the mirror and back then we didn't have uh it was the next best thing to a pencil test because we didn't have video cameras or anything. We were just working at home. And you can see all your mistakes. And you, I just go back in, fix them, and then flip it in the mirror again. That's how I came up with that one. And it worked great. It worked good, yeah. But now, gotta tell you, if you're, uh, you know, because of digital, this nothing's better than this. Oh, it's fast, yeah. Really, really convenient. Uh, let's check this out here. Yes, you, uh, let's see, guys. Uh, tips for cleanup. Um. <laughs> Cleanup is when you really put in the perspective lines of as far as if your your character's moving in space, the construction, you have to slow down a lot on your cleanup. Make sure everything is within drawing. Uh, you got any other tips? Oh uh, boy, on cleaning up stuff. Um, Just slowing down and making it sure it, your drawing becomes fully realized within the model of the character. Yeah, model's a big part of it. You know, and that's the main thing. Like if you do, like these drawings that Mike is doing here, but it had to be Bugs Bunny. Uh, you know, you gotta slow down in the cleanup or the tie down phase. Now, I, I work rough and tie down. Tie down means uh, to the point where I can hand it off to the cleanup artist and all the information is in there. Now there are times when you're being pushed and they need that scene really quickly and Mike, let's say Mike animated this and they said well we're gonna take it right now from you after he charts it and gets it all done and there will be if you have a cleanup department that really knows the character well, they'll be able to put it on model. So it really uh, varies as far as who's on the crew, you know, how familiar everybody is with the character that you're drawing. Because usually if you're working on a feature, you're working on characters. Like I was on the Darla uh, Dimple team for Cast Don't Dance and Max and Rico was on the, what team? I was on Danny. Danny, Danny. So that's my best advice. But if you're cleaning up your own drawings, I would in the beginning 
if you choose work loose like this and then when you go to tie them down don't work real tight just go back into these drawings and realize the drawings more and if you're going to take it to the very end you know finish cleaned up drawing just take your time and just make sure that you got all your volumes and everything's in arc that you're following these roughs as far as the animation goes i hope that answers it uh, oh let's see yeah. just just to clarify i think when, when putting something on model it means to uh, make it look like the character that's just all that means really in case that's a, a question at all for anybody i think they did clarify it better <laughs> better than me yeah uh, just a side note did you ever get to talk to or meet Richard Williams in person? No, I never did. Did you? Um, I got his autograph at a book signing when he came to Sony Imageworks. He came by and showed some stuff and lectured to us, answered questions, and we all lined up and got his autograph. But it was just for a few seconds, you know, it wasn't like sitting and talking with him. And the only other time I ever saw him in person was in, in Tummy Trouble at Disney. There was a, a meeting, I guess he was a part of it, or was a consultant or something, and uh, he was he was there in the room, and I saw him when I was walking out. That was that was cool. That was back in the day. I never, never, never got, never to, got to, to. I never got to talk to him, though. God bless Richard Williams. He wrote the greatest book. Oh, God, if you yeah. want to learn animation, study his book. All right, so let's see what we go. Let me put the tail on here real quick. Hello, tail. There we are. Gets hidden, and it's over here. So another thing about this stuff is you have to visualize. Like this tail disappears here and reappears. You have to imagine what it's doing while it's moving around back there. And then just you know when it comes out you have to visualize where it's going to wind up okay let's check this out walks da, 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 da. steps on attack ouch reacts puts his flails his arms out in anticipation to grab his foot and boom there he is all straight ahead no real pre-planning just a few couple of little thumbnail sketches to figure out what the heck the idea is going to be and that's it and then I just went ahead and scribbled it out and tried to make it flow. Did the primary actions first and then did the secondary actions. Beautiful. Are you going to play to speed? Yeah, how do you do that? Oh, just hit the play oh. button. It's probably going to be too fast because it's all on uh, ones. <laughs> Which will be good. We're going to show you something here. Actually, I guess it's not too fast. It, yeah. It could use some parts on twos, but. Uh, but you can see how out of control straight ahead is. It's all over the map. There's no. There's no uh, guides I used. I didn't use any arc lines. I didn't use any background. No reference whatsoever. Just straight ahead like a flip book. Just pure movement. That's all I was doing. So the problem with this is it's hard to wrangle the proportions and the model and, and the position of the character in the frame, unless you have a background, of course. But I was just doing it pure. But the good thing about this is it flows. Guys, it, it flows. It's pure yeah. animation there. Uh, would this be harder to go in and then tie down and <laughs> all that? It would be, but it wouldn't be as hard as you may think. It would just be a couple of poses here and there that you would adjust. And, but it's loose and free and full of life. And that's really the main thing you want to get when you're uh, animating you know when he comes in it's a becomes an action scroll. scene scroll. yeah it becomes an action scene right here's personality there's his personality right there and then up here ow jumps up that's the action part of it and right up here we can see there's the ground plane oops god darn it and then when he lands he lands down here. All you would have to do is just move him up a little bit to match 
that ground plane. Or, or he could be, could be he yeah. could be jumping in perspective this way. Yeah. Now this is what I want to show you guys is. Should we save this first? It's it's saved. Oh, okay. I want to show you the difference of what timing uh, can do. Yeah. I'm going to put all these drawings on fours. Wow. I'm going to play it at speed. It's going to look super slow now. And this is why timing is half the art in character animation. Okay, same animation. Big difference. But doesn't feel natural looks like he's in slow motion underwater so all I did was take Mike's drawings I put him he had them on ones right yeah it was on ones. on ones and it was on ones and we know this is too slow but we know the animations working so if I come back here come on my should just there we go and now I'm going to put them all on twos. Ooh, look at this program. Slick, huh? <laughs> You'd have to reshoot all this stuff. And, uh... and see, I would. you could get away with that opening walk right there yep. to be on twos. Yep. And then the ending, I would put that on ones. So, right, and, because he reacts. Ah, yeah, he re faster. exactly. He yeah. reacts. So let's scroll through here. And then right in... Let's say there. Like, can we hold that last one for a while? Just yeah, it. definitely. Cool. Go there. We'll put that on ones. And then, how long you want to hold it, Rika? Like 12 frames. And we're going to hold that last one. And this is figuring out your timing. <laughs> Ouch! Ouch! <laughs> and then obviously within those 12 frames you would have the follow through and everything or you can just have it freeze like so but I hope that shows what you can what timing how important timing is uh, I make the comparison to music you know you want to vary your timing like right there here he's strutting along and he jumps up quick. Let's see, any it, questions? It gives a nice texture to the scene. Instead of it all being monotonously timed, it has got it, it switches up. Yeah. It adds much more interest to it visually and uh, feel-wise. Instead of it just being one pace throughout. Yeah. Let's see some questions, and then we're going to say goodbye. Did you ever meet? No. Do you like Tom and Jerry sound effects? <laughs> we, oh, yeah. love, we love Tom and Jerry. Of course. Yeah, it's fun stuff. What is the best way to start full body animation? Should we start with the flower sack? What do you think? Are you talking about full body realistic human human being? No, I no, I th I think they're just talking about full a full figure. Oh, okay. Which yes, I would say the flower sack is real good cuz it's simple to draw and you can still get personality in there. Yeah, real easy to draw. There's no crazy limbs you have to worry about right. or anything. Right. So yes, I think that is a good good way to go. Thank you very much, Rico and Rico. You're welcome, Luz. Welcome. In uh, frame twenty two, that's called a smear frame, if I'm not wrong. Twenty two. Must be this and this. Yeah, there are multiples. Instead of yeah, instead of a thing. smear, yeah, it's it's a. Uh, it, it's a type of smear. It, yeah. It's multiples, but it is one of those uh, cheat drawings. Actually, this foot here would be considered a smear in a way because it's distorted as well. You know, whenever you have something that really stretches like that, it's called a, it could be called a smear. Uh, it's such a broad stretch, you know. Sumo says... I really am having a hard time understanding how to draw those smear frames. Any tips? Ooh, yeah, those are a lot of fun to do. Um, let's see, you know what? A good reference to look at would be live action. When you watch live action films and you see people going through action, like maybe some martial arts films where there's fast action, 
and you'll notice that in a lot of the quick movements their arms or hands are blurred like you know across the frame because the camera can only pick up so much and that shows you how you can get away with mm -hmm. smearing or distorting an image or a part of, a part of a figure to to know how to draw that you know in uh, animation also, it's a good good starting point let me, let me see this also let's say what frame am I on there let's say you got the ball there and then I'll put another ball there. I will turn on the onion skin. Here we got our first ball, third ball. If you're going to do a smear, you basically, for the first ones, just to experiment with, just have a smear that will go from this edge to that edge. Let's say there were some eyes, nose right there. That's good. I have a hard time drawing them. <laughs> That's good over. Yeah, this should work. Turn that off. And there. And if you go from the edge to edge, put in your first drawing and then put in your smear drawing. Put in your first drawing, your third drawing, then put in the smear drawing, which is right there. It's just a distortion then, of the movement. There you go. Now let's oh. play it at speed. It's going to go by really quick. <laughs> really quick. Zips. But it but it works. It works. And then what you do, I I think Eric Goldberg's book is great showing examples of smears. Oh yeah. yeah so you so. you can just feel it. It just stretches over there and I did it in no time. What Rico had done there, that's a little those are multiple drawings. A little different than yeah. a smear. It's but like Sort of the same effect. It's what it's doing when you have multiple images like these arms here is you're trying to convey more drawings in one drawing mm -hmm. for the movement than you would if you don't have enough time to put in more drawings. You want it to go really fast. That's all it is. And they're and they're usually used in cartoony animation. Yeah. Usually. Let's, let's see. Can Procreate do like this, please? Oh, I don't know much of it. Do you know Procreate? Not at all. I, I think I've it. heard people, you can animate in it, but I, I, I don't know, I don't know how to do it. Uh, what, what time is it? <laughs> I know, we're running late. We're going oh. we're gonna to say goodbye here. All right. Uh, you should check out a video that Wayne posted about one month ago. It's a, s oh, thank you, Alessandro. Yes, I got... Look, you guys, I got videos of smears. We got videos of smears, and I think everything. I think we cover everything. Check out our channel. It's really, it's. I think it's all there. I saw people like Glenn Keane doing straight-ahead animation while most of the other Disney animators do pose-to-pose. -pose. So it was just more of one's choice, or does it depend upon the scene? Uh, I'm not sure you work with Glenn King. Does he work I, straight ahead? I think it mostly depends on the scene because if it's more like, like Wayne was pointing out about this rabbit thing where he jumps and reacts to the pain, that's more of a straight ahead action. So like dances, dance scenes, or fight scenes would be more of a straight ahead action. Whereas acting would be pose to pose. And I've seen Glenn do both. He's done pose to pose with the acting you know, emotional scenes with Ariel or stuff in Oliver and Company with the cat. Um, so it, it depends on the scene mostly, yeah. but yeah, there's, there's also personal preference in there too. You know, I think he likes to work, he likes to mix it up. I, I mean, when I've seen him uh, do demonstrations, it has been straight ahead. But sometimes I feel like he does because he just doesn't have that much time and he's, he's, tra and he's trying to convey, he's a very emotional animator yeah. and I think he's trying to convey how much he 
he feels into his drawings. So, but Mike's right. If you get an action scene straight ahead, pose to pose, uh, it usually goes with acting. Yeah, acting or performance, yes. Uh, amazing with the animation. You're pro yes, procreate. Oh, okay, so yes, procreate is amazing with animation as well. Uh, thank you very much. We're going to say to the live here and going to watch your videos. Thank you, guys. Uh, we're going to say goodbye. Uh, Mike did a beautiful demo there. Good job, Rico. Thanks, man. Wow. <laughs> Trashy. <laughs> Rico. Rico animation. Rico and Rico. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you for all great questions. Yeah. Uh, this was a lot of fun, and we are going to try to do a live stream next Saturday. All right? Cool. All right. Say bye-bye, Rico. Bye-bye, Rico. <laughs> <laughs>